The following program is sponsored by Friends of Life Outreach International. Next on Life Today, Beth Moore warns against the God of me. I go through my closet pretty often because I'll stop at a shirt. My, my rule is if you have not worn it in the last year, girl, you don't get it. Get rid of it. Sometimes toward the end of that year, I go, oh, I start putting on all manner of things. <laughs> and I'll look just strange. I'll look kind of out of character at work, but I'm just going like, ha, my year's almost up. Don't forget to remember next on Life Today. Today. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm Betty and this is James. Yeah, I just said, this is, I'm getting <laughs> a little clumsy. As I, as I get older, I'm getting pretty clumsy. I said, well, just go be sure to tell them who we are and stuff. We're welcome. She said, they know who we are. <laughs> Betty, James, welcome to Life Today. Beth Moore is teaching, and I love the title. Don't forget to remember. As you get older sometimes, <laughs> I, you are amazing. You, you've not lost any ability to remember everything. It's just amazing to me. And I pick up the phone to call somebody. If they don't answer on the first ring, I forget why I'm calling them. <laughs> and they'll say, what do you need? I said, I don't know, you didn't answer quick enough. <laughs> now, I don't know if any of you have that problem, but believe me, it is, it's reality and I think I'm okay. But I know one thing, I count it an honor to share, I believe the heart of God and his truth through Beth Moore. To those of you all over the world, who want to hear what God has to say to you through a very gifted woman from the Word of God. So here is Beth Moore saying, don't forget to remember. Here she is. At verse 8, I told you we'd be back to it, where it talks about this good land. Um, for us, our Canaan is a, it's a good land. Wherever we, he places us, that's a good land. It's going to be a fruitful land. And, and look at this, because he said the, the land your, your Lord, your, the Lord your God is giving you, a good land. He talks about the water in it. And then he says in verse 8, I want you to count with me. Every single time I say a kind of produce, I want you to count. So with the first one, I just want everybody to say one and then on. A land of wheat. And barley, Two. of vines, Three. and fig trees, Four. and pomegranates, Five. and olive trees, Six. and honey. Seven. All right. How many? Seven. How many? Seven. Isn't that interesting? It's going to be a good land. It begins, the description begins with a good land and saying God is giving you this good land. It closes in these verses from 8 to 10. Or 7, I believe, is where it starts with good and then closes up at 10. Yes, uh, verse 7, into a good land. And it closes up in verse 10 uh, for the Lord your God, for the good land He has given you. Within that good, He gives us exactly seven kinds of produce. Now, you know there were other things. But this is a biblical way of showing us that it will be completely productive. A beautiful number. How many things could he have said? But there's seven in this description of the good land. It means there will be complete productivity. Notice with me, this is important. So somebody just get their eyes on the page here. Notice that he says in verse 9, it is a land in which you will eat what? Bread. Tell me again, you will eat what? Bread. And, and it is a land you will also, look at the latter half of it, that out of whose hill, hills you can do what? Dig, Dig copper. So you're, you're going to, he gives them the wheat. In, in verse 8, he says, it will be a land of wheat, but they're going to eat bread. So, I mean, if they can just sit and stare at their wheat stalk <laughs> and go, in Jesus' name, <laughs> be bread. In Jesus' name, be bread. They can take the wheat stalk and they can put it, um, they can put a piece of turkey on it. I was going to say ham, but they couldn't put ham <laughs> on their sandwich. We're free. We can. They could not. I mean, you can put it all, but it's going to be crunchy. It's going to be a little odd. Uh, but in the land of productiveness, where our productivity begins to really live itself out in full throttle, um, 
uh, calling for that season. We may not come into what we have truly been called to do for some amount of years where we realize this really is where all of this has been moving toward, but where we're getting to be productive. You will notice that in the wilderness, he gave them manna. He brought it to them. Do you know that the moment they got into that promised land, that manna ceased? The moment. You know what he gave them then? Wheat. You know what he's saying? Go fix your bread. I'm giving you the tools. I'm giving you the in ingredients for you to be able to come through with something marvelous. But if you just sit back, because we get all confused here and we think, he was doing all of this and now he's like, what is he giving you? Put it to work. Because in our land of productivity, we become the wonder. Us, the person who is able to do things through Christ that would be impossible in our flesh. We want him to just, I want my manna. I want my manna. Okay, well, we can just sit right there and then we'll never, ever grow up into our productivity. Never. Because we cease to, we're not, we're not going to cooperate and do any of the work. Oh, no, we're not going to. We're not going to have any spiritual disciplines. You know, we're not going to do what it takes. We look at somebody else that we think is productive and we hear something, we say, okay, now what does your life kind of consist of? And then we think, I don't have time for that. It was so, it was so funny because uh, here recently to my office um, came a call to a really, really good friend of mine. All my, they're just my best friends at Living Proof. And, and uh, she, she received a call that, uh, from a woman in Japan uh, doing the Bible studies. And she said, well, um, could, is there a shorter version of the homework? <laughs> because we are busy here. And we just laughed because... Bless her, we're busy here, you know. <laughs> we're, we all got our 24-7, and we all get to decide what we're going to do with it. We all get to decide how we're going to manage our time. But listen, if your wheat's going to become bread, you're going to have to spend some time with Jesus. You're going to have to have some discipline. That's what it's going to take. We're going to have to do the thing. We're, we're going to have to go out there and step in it, uh, put our weight into it, put our faith into it, and be part of it. You'll also see, did you see that we have to dig? Everybody say dig. dig. I want you to feel it. I want you to see it under your finger. We have to dig the copper. He said, you know, go make bread and go dig out copper. Do you remember when they left Egypt? They just threw their treasures at them. Just threw them. Here, it's our gold and silver. And I mean, the Egyptians were just like throwing their treasures at them. It was just given to them right in their hand. But they get into the place of their productivity, and he goes, dig it. Dig it out. Everything will not be put in your hands because this is your place of productivity where you begin to know what I can do, not just for you, through you. This was all about what I could do through you, not just for you. I want to use you to show the great power of my name. That's what this is about. So we, we get there into our place of productivity and listen, some, if we're willing to, to work with him, um, some things happen. And I mean, it's like stunning things happen. And it's like, whoa, uh, God, I can't believe you did that. And because we've been in bondage and, and we've been through a lot, we're still very, very um, humbled by it. So we'll just serve any way. I mean, just Lord, if you can use me, just use me. We'll serve any way. We'll serve anybody for a while. And then, well, I don't want to really, I don't want to do that. And I don't really like doing that for them. And it gets to where it matters more and how we do it. And, you know, no one even appreciates me. And um, we just get where I don't want to just serve anyone. And I don't want to just do anything. I need some press here. Um, and then we start taking God for granted. And then indiscernibly, whew, we start taking God's credit. And then we are dropped to our grounds back in bondage. And it all starts again because we have bowed the knee to the God of me. Let there be no mistaking that the biggest idolatry problem that we will have will be the God of me. 
and the whole process starts again. I love the uh, New International Commentary of the Old Testament translation of verse 14 when it says, then your heart will be lifted up and you will forget the Lord your God. It says this, then you may become proud and forget the Lord your God. When, okay, when we are in pride, even when we just are in pride because we're right, and maybe we are, but we're in pride about it. We cannot remember God and be full of pride at the same time. It, it, there's not enough headspace for it. Uh, one overwhelms the other. We're either full of ourselves or we're, or we're full of uh, our, um, our uh, givenness to the Lord our God, but not ever at the same time. Jer jot down Jeremiah 22, 21, if you're able. 22, 21, it says, I spoke to you in your prosperity, but you said, I will not listen. There's something about us. If we could handle the giftedness that God would like to give, if we could only handle it. But he said, here's what happens. I prosper you, and then um, I try to speak to you in your prosperity, and you don't listen to me. Because there's something about like being like desperate that really opens up the ears, doesn't it? But then there's just like now we're full, and all of a sudden... Um, we can't hear them anymore. And I just want to submit to you that we, all of us, all of us, um, particularly some of us, I throw myself into that category. I mean, we are, I'll talk physically for just a moment. We've already said uh, intangibly just the giftedness and the anointing that God is willing to give us in our productivity. But we also in this nation, in the West, in the prosperous West, we are up to, picture it, because the Lord gave me this picture this morning. We are up to our ears in stuff. <laughs> up to our ears. And it's very important that we know it's up to our ears because it's in our ears. It's in our ears. And um, some of it, and this is between you and God, some of it we need to give away. Uh, you know, one of the things that God has really put on my heart, he goes, you know, Beth, use it. I, ha I mean, have it to use. But if you don't use it, lose it. In my closet, and I say this, I say, I go through my closet pretty often. And one of the things I said, and I speak out loud to myself, because I'll stop at a shirt. My, my rule is, if you have not worn it in the last year, girl, you don't get it. Get rid of it. Sometimes toward the end of that year, I go, oh, I start putting on all manner of things. <laughs> and I'll look just strange. I'll look kind of out of character at work, but I'm just going like, ha, my year's almost up. And so, um, so, and I say out loud to myself, this, this happened just, just about a week and a half ago. I say to myself, girlfriend, you wear it or share it. You wear it or share it. You either put it on your body or you get it out of that closet and out of those drawers. Get rid of it. If you do not wear it, you share it. And, and so that's that just part of what, just to get it. Okay, we're up to hearing stuff, but if we're up to here, we can't hear. So at least get the stuff down to the shoulders. Get the stuff out of the ears. Is that making sense to anybody? I, I'll once again display an, uh, a grasp of the obvious, but the only way we're not going to forget is because we're going to deliberately remember. You will forget if you do not deliberately remember. You won't just like naturally keep it. You'll have to think, I intend, I purpose, to remember where my God has brought me. So don't forget to remember, and there's going to be a couple of them, just, just a few. Number one is this, back, based on verse 2 where it says, um, and you shall remember the whole way the Lord your God brought you. I, I had you say the whole way before, but this is a new moment. So everybody say the whole way. The whole way. So the first one is don't forget to remember the whole way that the Lord your God has led you. The whole way. Now, verses 14 through 16 describe this way, and it talks about this great and terrifying place and the scorpions and, um, and all the uh, frights that were there. But then it talks about and how they thirsted, but then it gets into, listen, I brought you water from a rock. Uh, just go there with me. Maybe we've been in this so long that we have lost sight of that, but I just want you to picture being really thirsty and like then uh, a, a rock is hit and a rock, a rock, and out pours this fountain, cool, refreshing water. I want you to picture it. And, I, I, and he says then, and I brought you manna. Uh, the whole way, the whole way, all that it entailed, um, great 
and terrifying. Um, two main versions. The ESV says that terrifying, the terrifying part. The NAS says terrible. Um, I want you, as you look back over your journey with God, it's important not only to remember the, the good parts, but let's, what, what are those three words again? The what? The whole, the whole way. way. Say back to me, the whole way. Um, not only the good parts, but also the terrible parts or the terrifying parts. Now, I'm not saying go back and relive the whole emotion, but remember it. Remember it. Never forget how terrible or terrifying our times of bondage were. Never. Never. It should be still so implanted on our mind. Not the guilt of it. Um, not the ongoing um, bondage of it, but that the feeling of what it was like to live apart from our total submission to the authority and the freedom that is in Christ. To remember what it was like to be in complete bondage. That's very, very important. And for me, it was not only terrible, it was terrifying. I terrified myself. It just wasn't things around me. I mean, plenty of those terrified me, but I terrified my own self. Then, but I also had like, when he was bringing me out, I'd be just, I have water from a rock. Not physically, but in, I can't even tell you, fed me, man, I mean, I ate the word like it was ambrosia. I can't tell you what it tasted like to me. And I, I jotted down in my notes, remember the awful and the awesome because both provoke awe. I just want you to see those two words in your mind. Here's awful and here's awesome. But both of them provoke awe. When God says, lest you forget and not fear the Lord your God, that fear is awe of him, awe of him. And the awful awes me before God. And the awesome just awes me before God. That everything would bring us to a place where we're just like awed by God. This is an easy thing. Beth, I know you watch a lot, if, even after you've taught, to see how it's coming into the home. You know, when you're in the awe of God and you understand the fear of God, and I think if we grasp it fully, we'll understand that the, the greatest fear is not being in the shelter and shadow of the Father, walking close. And the awe of God is realizing that He is all-powerful, almighty, all-knowing and yet always loving. You know, baby, I shared something this week I think is very important. It was certainly important to me because I was sharing with some friends that I know I have missed the mark. I know I have failed. I failed the standard. And I have never felt my Father in Heaven communicate to me, I'm disappointed in you. I hear Him say, I'm disappointed for you. For what you may have missed, or what I know you missed, he never looks down at us. He always looks at us desiring us to look up to and unto him. Don't forget to remember the greatness of our God. One of the things that Betty has meant as much to our viewers, and you tell us this all the time, we, we don't run into people when we're out in public who, if they see us, don't come over and say how much they enjoy not the program alone or the guest, but the ability to become a miracle. I said a miracle in somebody's life. In many ways, the miracle many of you are praying for. And you know, if you become the miracle, it's amazing what begins to happen oftentimes in our own life that we can continue to share miracles because of the love of God. Watch this. Now you watch and tell me if you don't want to be this person's Miracle, and many others. Burundi, a forgotten land, a forgotten people. But don't be deceived by its beauty, because the same source of life for Burundi's lush landscape is a poison for its people. And too often, the victims of waterborne illnesses are the most innocent and vulnerable. She made my 
we arrived too late to save Julian's baby. And with contaminated drinking water still a factor for her community, it's only a matter of time before tragedy strikes again. She said, I'm praying. I'm concerned, I'm worried about my children. Why wouldn't she be? I, w I want you just to look at her. I want you to look at that, look at that precious woman. She's praying. She's got a broken heart. Would you like to heal her heart? Her broken heart? Would you like to care for those little ones, that concern that she's expressed for those beautiful? Look at them. Would you like to be the miracle for those two little ones and so many others? What goes on, Betty, when you see that beautiful woman? Well, because we do understand the loss, you know, losing a child of our own, and she's lost her, her little girl that she so loves. And she's hurting, and she's desperate yet at the same time, and she's worried. Why? Because her other children. Some are already having some signs and effects from the disease water, and it just breaks my heart as I hear the, the cry of her heart for somebody to reach out and to help. She's asking God to send some way, someone, to reach out and make a difference and save her children. And that's where we come in. And I'm, I'm so excited every time I hear we have an opportunity to drill a water well, because you know why? That is lasting. That is gonna be clean water, pure water for her children and many other. And I, we've been over there when the water well comes through and the children are dancing around in the water and they're playing like little children should be able to play. And we've also seen it when we haven't gotten there in time and the, and the disease takes over and takes the life of a little child. So please join with us. Let's reach out and let's drill these water wells so that they can be a lasting good water source for them. You know, I want to, if I could speak her language, just say God heard your prayer. And uh, we heard it. And we care. And I believe you heard it. And I believe you saw not only that mom and those two little children, but the hundreds of children in that area that are drinking the contaminated water. All those beautiful crops, you know, you use animal waste to actually enhance crop growth, but contaminated water that can grow crops kills people. So we need clean water. And Jesus is the water of life. And we share water for life because of the water of life. And we tell those people the source of that love and they find Christ. Lifetoday.org, online. Would you go there? Would you take your bank card and make the largest love gift you can? Or you can dial the phone number where people are calling for prayer. You can call to be an answer to prayer. I want you to give the largest gift you possibly can, knowing this, the wells cost an average of $4,800. If you can give $4,800, I believe you will. Sometimes we get a note saying, I'm drilling two wells. God's blessed me. I can do it. I want to do it. Whatever you can do, do it. You may be able to say, James, I can't do that, but I could give 1,200 and pray three people join me or 2,400 and pray one joins me. I believe God will answer that prayer while you're being an answer to prayer. But here's where most of the resources come from. Don't miss this. $48 gives 10 people water for the rest of their life. That's an average. 144 will give 30 people water for life. Robert Morris, our pastor, has written a book on hearing God. He says that's the question he's most often asked. He wants to help you. And believe me, he can. And you can hear God. Let him help you do it. We want to send gifts to say thank you for giving life. 
lifetoday.org or dial the number, your bank card used like a check, please, right now. Make the largest gift God enables you to make and become an answer to prayers just like that mother needed answered now. You become the answer. Thank you. Every day, children living in extreme poverty are forced to make a dreadful choice. Drink filthy, polluted water filled with deadly disease or die from thirst. No child should ever be faced with this decision. The good news is there is a solution. Mission Water for Life is one of the most proven and viable demonstrations of God's love in the world today. Suffering can end because clean water changes everything. With your gift today, you can help establish and drill 500 water wells in remote villages in over 15 different nations. Your gift of $24 will help provide clean water for five people. A gift of $48 will help provide for 10. $72 will provide for 15 people. And $144 will help provide fresh water for 30 people for a lifetime. With your gift, we would like to send you Pastor Robert Morris' new book, Frequency. As you read, you'll discover how to hear God's voice, receive direction for your life, and experience a deeper connection with God. With your gift of $100 or more, you'll also receive the Hearing God Daily Journal and Scripture Pen, a wonderful way to record what God is impressing on your heart and a beautiful keepsake for your daily prayer time. Finally, please consider a gift of $1,200 to help provide water for 250 people or a gift of $4,800 to help sponsor a complete well and you may request our beautiful Majesty Bronze Sculpture. Please call, write, or make your gift online today. Thank you so much for your help. I do hope that you will ask for frequency. We're sending that for any gift that you make, the journal and the beautiful pen. Robert Morris is our pastor at Gateway. We're hitting close to 35,000 people a week, almost always well over 30,000. You know what Robert Morris says, the question most people ask him, the one most frequently? How can I hear God? How can I know his voice? Well, he's written a book called Get on the Frequency, the Frequency, tune in the channel and hear and recognize the voice of God and also the voice of the enemy because he really does counterfeit. So we want to send it to you. Thank you for giving water in Jesus' name. And thank all of you for being with us. And thanks to Beth Moore. Jay found his wife, Catherine, unconscious from a massive brainstem stroke. Miraculously, she survived and now shares her message, Hope Heals. Life Today is made possible by the supporters of Life Outreach International. Your gift will be used exclusively for the exempt purposes of life. The ministry features specific outreaches as examples of the programs it supports and conducts. Gifts are considered to be without restriction as to use unless explicitly stipulated by the donor. The ministry is a member of the ECFA.